Hi, it's Chris with the Wild Berry Patch and we're reading through wisdom and praise. And today's readings is our Psalms 9, 39, 69, 99, 129, and Proverbs 9. And I've got a few little insights to share with you. I was looking for a song that went with the first few verses of Psalm 9. I will thank Yahweh with all my heart. I will declare all your wonderful works. I will rejoice and boast about you, and I will sing your name, O Most High. I found a couple. They're um, unique um, songs, and I've put those in the blog. So the psalm is talking about being defended. Again, this is one of um, David's prayer journals and about being delivered. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness and he executes judgment on the nations with fairness. Now, this next one is a go-to verse for me. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you because you have not abandoned those who seek you. Then there is another go-to in this, uh, this psalm. And remember I have had um, struggles with, um, I have trauma with sexual abuse and I have trauma with um, suicidal ideations. So some of these psalms have been my Go to verses, and so I'd like to share another one. Be gracious to me, Lord. Consider my affliction at the hands of those who hate me. Lift me up from the gates of death so that I may declare your praises. I will rejoice in your salvation within the gates of Zion. The Bible has answers to all of our problems and situations and issues. We just have to look. And so I'm hoping if, if you are struggling with anything like that, that that would be a go-to verse for you for today. Psalm 39. This is another of David's prayer journals. And it's another one that is filled with angst. I said, I will guard my ways so that my tongue may not sin. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle as long as wicked are in my presence. I was speechless and quiet. I kept silent even from speaking good and my pain intensified. There are situations that we find ourselves in where we are trying so hard to be the child of God and those around us are doing so many things to make it difficult for us. Well, this psalm is a good psalm for that. But he confesses his own sin. In verse 8, deliver me from all my transgressions and do not make me the taunt of fools. You, were, you discipline a man with punishment for sin, consuming like a moth what is precious to him. Remember, sin is anything that comes between us and God or prevents us from putting God first. So here's a prayer for forgiveness. Hear my prayer, Lord, and listen to my cry for help. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a foreigner residing with you, a temporary resident like all my fathers. Turn your angry gaze from me so that I may be cheered up before I die and I'm gone. When we're really, really struggling with our transgressions, sometimes a, a prayer like that is just what we need. Psalm 69. More um, of David's prayer book. Um, Save me, God, for the water has risen to my neck. I have sunk in deep mud and there is no footing. 
I have come into deep waters and a flood sweeps over me. I am weary from my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without cause are more numerous than the hairs of my head. My deceitful enemies who would destroy me are powerful. Though I did not steal, I must repay. Now this was this last little verse I thought was interesting. Sometimes when we're struggling with things, some of the reasons we're struggling is because it's unfair. I did not steal, but I have to repay. I, I have some things in my life where I've had to do that. But you know what? In the end, the whole big picture, God makes it right. God makes it right. So then David is praying. Do not let those who put their hope in you be disgraced because of me. We don't always realize that our lives, the way we act when we declare that we are a Christian, a follower of Christ, the way we behave may affect the next person that comes behind us or shows up. Oh, well, you are. Have you ever had someone say, oh, you're a Christian. You're like those. Maybe we are. Maybe we aren't. But we have to remember we represent God. And by representing God, we also have a um, responsibility for others who represent God that we make sure that we don't do something that would harm their reputation as well. So finishing out this psalm, as for me, Lord, my prayer to you is for a time of favor. In your abundant faithful love, God, answer me with your sure salvation. Answer me, Lord, for your faithful love is good. He ends this with a confession of, uh, well, it's a long psalm. He, he writes a confession of faith in the midst of his despair. I will believe. And he continues asking, please, please deliver me from my enemies. But as for me, poor and in pain, let your salvation protect me, God. I will praise God's name with a song and exalt him with thanksgiving. That will please Yahweh more than the ox and more than the bull with horn and hooves. The humble will see it and rejoice. You who seek God, take heart. The thinking about David's life, there were a lot of times when he was literally in trouble and in danger. And we can learn from him and make um, analogies for our life. Psalm 99 is just a beautiful psalm of praise. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth quake. Yahweh is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. That's, that's a great um, psalm to read and just for um, when you need a little praise, pick me up. Psalm 129 is another of the oppressed praying for protection. Since my youth, they have often attacked me. Sounds like bullies, doesn't it? Let Israel say, since my youth, they have often attacked me, but they have not prevailed against me. Plowmen plowed over my back and they made their furrows long, but the Lord is righteous and he cuts the ropes of the wicked. God comes to deliver us. Proverbs 9 is talking about wisdom and wisdom preparing a house to invite us in. She calls out from the highest points of the city, whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, come, eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave the inexperience behind you and you will live. Pursue the way of understanding. 
we're not le we're not left to just wallow along in our ignorance. God has prepared wisdom for us and we can study his word and we can pray and we can learn and we can grow in wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and grant you the peace that passes all understanding and keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I'll see you next time. Bye.